Okay, so I'm going to try to do my little PCB for the TG16 here. And I haven't populated it yet. I plan to before I get onto the board this time. But it's just going to be that one chip and one capacitor. And then the other three pads over here just for the switch. Okay, here's another example of my old way of doing the region mod on TG16s. Um, I still wasn't cutting the pins. Um, I was actually cutting the traces right here. And I'll show you that later in a different video. But I was just soldering wires down here where my new PCB is also going to solder down to. And then I had this little PCB. And this is an even older version that had two chips on it. I can't remember what what they were, 4459s? I don't know, but I don't even remember if this actual <laughs> this version actually worked. I really don't remember. But there's the switch, and um, this is just one of the one, one more um, inspiration. Uh, it was just kind of a, an evolution from a long time ago back when we were all using the eight pole double throw switch I was still trying to do it this way where I was cutting traces on this side and soldering just right straight two pins or whatever on the motherboard on this side um, some of it may have had to do with uh, this side of the board it is the one with the very short uh, RF shielding on it like I didn't want to put all of this wiring and everything up in here and cut and lift and pins and all that but I still think the other PCB that I was going to use for the duo would still fit in there like that and clear everything just fine so both will work on this I just I wanted to do this board this new board based on all the stuff I've been doing like this for a long time Okay, soldering it down is no different than every other time I do it. It's just drag soldering with some flux and a little practice and anybody can do even these really, really tiny pads and small chips. And I'm sure I've said this in the past, but this is not something that uh, the customer is going to have to worry about. If I do sell these, they will already be populated and soldered and everything. Ready to just simply solder down. Matter of fact, I might even go have somebody else make these for me if I ever get to that point I'm definitely due for a new tip I think I got a I think I got a line on one on eBay today but they are expensive and let's see the Point one cap. Now I'll break out the I loop. <laughs> and have a look over those pads and pins on that chip make sure everything looks good and then we'll actually solder it down to the motherboard well it looked kind of ugly when I was doing it 
but now that I see it, I think most of them are soldered actually quite well. Yeah, excellent. Well, obviously we want to start with a working TG-16, and I actually put a note on this one over two years ago that it worked. I think I actually took the case from it and was doing that logo light mod and used the case kind of a template for doing other ones. I don't remember. Something like that. So I put a note on this one. And for all those that are, I don't know what that is, for all those that are doing this for the first time, getting this uh, RF shielding off seems kind of tricky but if you really don't care about it that much I mean it doesn't really do a lot it's like an FCC thing but you'll have a ton of these solder pads right here connecting them two together and honestly if you just put some force on it you can break them off most of them are broken anyway when I get these and open them up and look at them you can try to resolder them down afterwards but once you break them you're kind of lifting that bit of the pad up right there and then it's not going to solder down to anything. You've actually lifted the copper off of the PCB right here. Not that big of a deal though, honestly. So this is usually how I end up doing it. I used to take really good care on getting these off so that I could solder them back down and blah blah blah. But that was long ago when I didn't really understand that this shielding just doesn't do much. Now the top one the, uh, the shorter one, which I don't have on me right now, does actually, is actually necessary because your 7805 right here uh, screws to a heat sink which is attached to that shielding. You know, and then there's a big plate of um, some kind of vinyl or whatever insulating layer between the heat sink and RF shield and the rest of the board. So, This is going to be as easy, I hope, as simply laying the board down like so. And I can already see through those holes silver of the solder underneath, which is what we're going to try to solder there. That's one of the things I'm worried about with this mod is I'm hoping solder just wicks up into these holes and we get a good connection which we'll test that once I solder them down I guess the only real issue here is to make sure they're aligned oh and there's another hole up here for power I'll make sure I see silver in that one as well and I do although it kinda looks like it could have been moved inward a little bit more just a hair so let's see I'm gonna put some flux on these I wonder no it does not look like we can go into the wrong pins up here because of this cutout in the PCB around this resistor array so it's not likely you'll ever accidentally solder to the wrong holes there Again, it might be nice to have a thinner PCB material. That way these pins actually come up through the board. I'm really not getting the feeling that this is going to work on this side though. We might actually have to put 
some kind of pin down through it like a resistor leg matter of fact we might be able to get away with poking it down through there and pulling it right back out well the easiest thing to do about the Radio Shack again check for continuity since we haven't cut the traces on the bottom yet and we won't get continuity through the chip if it's connected um, to those solder pads underneath here I should get continuity over here from the traces on the bottom side of the board if I can remember which one is which I want to say 15 might actually be down here I could be wrong oh, there it is 15 16 see that was not showing that one is that one is that one's not that one is so what I was thinking about doing is just taking a resistor leg poking it down into the hole that way I get a heat transfer down to the solder in the motherboard as well and I think I'd actually be connecting the two a lot easier maybe even pulling some of the solder up from the motherboard okay Now let's recheck. 15, 16, 17, 18 is, let's see, 19 is ground. No? <laughs> oh, hell, I'm reading the wrong way. This is 15 over here. 15, 16, 17, 18 is ground. Yes. 19, 20, 21. Two, three. So now they're all known, connected, good. And let's see. The next step is going to be to cut those traces. It's real easy to identify these. It's the only eight traces coming out back here and going up to that resistor array right area. Three of them go to vias here, but most of them trace around to those solder pads that I was just messing with. And I usually cut them like right here. And I usually do just use some kind of knife. Um, a Dremel would work too. Very critical that they are severed. And we also want to check and make sure that they are not shorted together. can see some copper there and that's okay it doesn't matter if they're exposed um, if anybody's wondering about this blade uh, this is kind of my go-to tool I've been without it for it seems like at least a year or more um, because I kept breaking them I only had two to begin with 
and I just never got around to ordering more but this is an X-Acto uh, number 10 blade I do recommend getting X-Acto brand I found these on eBay like a 10 pack for cheap bottom and just because they're they're thicker and they're stronger I think the ones that I snapped were just number 10 replicas you know some cheap Chinese stuff or whatever but what I do is I immediately dull the edge and I can run my finger across here pretty hard and not cut it because really what I use this for is just a dull knife you know just getting to do stuff like this I use this thing for everything it's just my go-to and everything tool so enough of rant about that now we need to recheck continuity make sure that we do not have continuity and that we do not have continuity between each trace okay so 15 16 go back and forth between 15 and 16 16 to 17 see that was ground none of, none of the ones next to it were ground 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. It's kind of going back and forth between all the pads. I'm getting no continuity. That's exactly, exactly what I'm looking for. So I think uh, solder on a switch. Solder to the pads here. I use a simple single pull double throw like that. So it's got three legs on it. I'll show it down here. And I've made the pads to where they're just kind of one for one right there. You know, the middle solder pad is the middle leg here, and then the outside pads are the outside legs and doesn't matter which way is which so I guess I'll do that off camera because it doesn't really need to be I don't know well I don't really need to show it but I need to find some wire or whatever and get that wired up and then we'll go test it <laughs> I just realized I did not solder the power And do this component leg trick again. Now to test that one for power continuity, we can just go to the right leg of the 7805. And there it is. So that should do that. Okay, so there's the switch all wired up. Simple. Let's go test it out. Alright, so it's fairly safe to test without that heat sink bolted back to the 7805, but not for long. Um, if, it autom if it just kind of mysteriously goes black or blank, it's probably because the 7805 overheated and um, has a thermal shutdown and it just shut off. So. We'll try a US game first. Solid screen doesn't boot, so it could be in the wrong region. Hit the switch. There we go. So we put it in the Japanese game. Should also just get solid screen. And no load. Turn it off. Hit the switch. And we get a Japanese game loading. Well, that's about all the testing that I would do without the heat sink bolted to that. So get your RF shielding back on here, maybe even put it all the way back into the case or you know, get your switch mount and all that stuff and then test it again and you're, you're probably good to go. It's, it's so much simpler than trying to solder all those wires, what, 16 of them or more, actually 18 if you can count power and ground, to a little PCB, but that's why I made this so much easier. And we may as well give a big shout out to the creator of the circuit, 
The Steve. Thanks a lot, man.